Let us look at this slide showing you the system of fluids with molecule. And we have three kinds of molecule as what you have learned last week, which are the gas, the liquid, and the solid. For each of the uh, fluids uh, may um, go through transport of molecules from one region to another region due to the concentration gradient, yeah, as what you have seen earlier in the previous slide last week. We have seen last week the definition of the fixed diffusion law using this symbol, which is J star. And in that equation of the fixed diffusion law, we have also seen the symbol, which is DAB, which is the diffusivity, or in other words, we call it diffusion coefficient of A through B. Here in this chapter 2, we'll be, we will be introduced to another symbol, which is N. And what is that N? We will see that in the future slides. Let us first look into the first subsection of the section molecular diffusion gas, which is 6.2a, Accumular counter diffusion. There are a few keywords that we should take note from the title of the subsection, which is Equimolar counter diffusion. As you can see from the slide figure 6.21 taken from the textbook, you can see two chambers which are set up, chamber number one and chamber number two. From each of the chambers, we have stirrers in order to allow uniform concentration of the molecules A and molecules B in both of the chambers. Here you see that the A and B are in binary mixtures for each of the chambers. We denote blue as A, yellow as B. From figure 6.21, you could also see the plot for the partial pressure of A and the partial pressure of B at location 1 and also at location 2. We know that the molecules will be transported from higher concentration to lower concentration. From here, by assuming it reaches steady state condition in a binary gas mixture chambers, it is assumed that the A goes to your right from chamber number one to chamber number two, and the B goes to the left from chamber number two to chamber number one. So let us further elaborate on the assumptions. The equations it means when we have the assumption we have to know how to write each of these equations each of these assumptions into equations and finally we will conclude based on the assumptions and the equations so let us look into the next slide this slide talks about the assumptions that we can make from the setup from figure 6.21. The first one is by assuming that the molecular diffusion reaches its steady state. Assumption number two, uniform concentration in both of the chambers by having the stirrers. Due to that, it goes to the third assumption which is constant total pressure, which is P. And P is defined as the summation between the partial pressure A and the partial pressure B. Take note that partial pressure of any gas represent the concentration of the gas in the mixture. And because of the assumption with the total, the constant total pressure, the mole, the net moles of A 
going to the right is equivalent to the net moles of B going to the left. How do we know whether it's right or left? It is simply because if you look at the plot of the partial pressure, we see that the partial pressure at location 1 for species A is higher than the partial pressure of A at location 2. So therefore, A goes to the right, which we make this assumption, and B goes to the left, showing a counter diffusion. This is written by the assumption number 5 and 6, showing the higher partial pressure in different location. In this case, higher at location 1 for A in comparison to that at location number 2. Same goes to here. B, the partial pressure of B is higher at location number 1 in comparison to the location number 2. In this case, um, I have to make a correction here. The partial pressure of B at location number 1 is lower than the partial pressure of B at location number 2. Let us further look at this plot. The partial pressure of B2, which is at location number 2, is way higher than the partial pressure of B at location number 1. So therefore, the B uh, will move from left to right. So please make this correction. Now, looking at this slide, talking about just now we, we, we talk about assumptions and from the assumptions, we want to translate it into equations. As you can see from the previous slide, we already do that. Yeah, With the theory and concepts uh, based on the assumptions, we write these equations. Yeah, And also the total concentration equation. And the final equation uh, or conclusion from the accumulator counter diffusion is the diffusivity of A through B is equivalent to the diffusivity of B through A. Just take note first with the conclusion. The question is how does this conclusion obtain? Yeah? How is this conclusion being obtained? It must come from a derivations from equations, and that equations come from assumptions. Yeah? So let us look into the derivation step by step. From this slide, we will start with step number one. As you know, the molecular diffusion is defined by the fixed diffusion law. So first, we will write the fixed diffusion law equation, which is defined as J star. In this case, we use this Z to show that the direction of the molecular transport is assumed to be in Z direction. So we have left to right, right to left, and that is considered as Z direction. So... Um, since the net mole of transport of A is equivalent to the net mole of transport of B, so therefore, we can write this equation saying that the diffusive flux of A in Z direction is equivalent to the other direction of B, which is JB, Z star. Since it is counter diffusion, one goes to your right and one goes to your left, but both are J star, J A, J B. So therefore, we introduce negative sign to show the counter diffusion direction. And now, from J B star, we open up the equation by applying the fixed diffusion law. We know the J is in the function of diffusivity of AB, DCA over DZ. Yeah? This, is, uh, this equation refers to JA star because we have the diffusive flux of A. It means it is being influenced by the diffusivity of A to B and the change of concentration of species A in the direction of Z. 
if you want to write the J B star, which means the diffusive flux of species B, then we write negative D B A. Diffusivity of B through A times the change of the concentration of B through the Z direction. Next, we will go to the second step. We want to define the total concentration in the function of the concentration of species A and the concentration of species B. Since it is a binary mixture, we know there are two species, which are species A and B. So the total concentration is defined as CA plus CB. Now, if you go back to the previous slide, we know that the expressions, both the JA star and the JB star, is or in the function of the derivative of C, the concentration, either A or B. So we want to write what is the equation for the derivative of the concentration. If you go to the next slide, knowing the concentration, total concentration is CA plus CB, to get the derivative of C A and C B, therefore we need to differentiate. Yeah, in this case, differentiate, not integrate, differentiate both sides. Yeah, in this case, D C is equivalent to D C A plus D C B. So by simplifying the differentiation for both sides, we finally conclude that. The, diff, uh, the DCA is equivalent to minus DCB. So we are going to use this equation in the next slide, which is step number three. Having the J star equation by open up the JAZ and the JBZ star, we have DCA and DCB. For example, here, minus DAB, DCA over DZ is equivalent to, we have here negative, yeah, because of the counter diffusion, and J itself is negative DBA, DCB over DZ. So, since negative times negative, so it becomes positive. But now, we are going to um, uh, replace the DCB by DCA because on the other left hand side we express the equation by DCA so we want to homogenize the expression yeah so since we know that DCA is equivalent to minus DCB so substitute DCB by the DCA and introduce another negative sign due to that it is concluded that negative DAB is equivalent to negative DBA if you simplify it, you will finally get DAB is equivalent to DBA as what we have seen earlier in the beginning. So uh, we have seen how the assumptions are written, how the assumptions are translated into equations, and finally we simplify the equations and conclude our final conclusion for the accumulator counter diffusion saying that the diffusivity of A through B is equivalent to the diffusivity of B through A. So this slide shows you the final conclusion for the accumulator counter diffusion.